Hi, and welcome. My name is Rafael Taubinger, and I'm from IR Systems. This session is about how to fast track bug fixes with IR Embedded Workbench and the new STM32H7 MCUs. This is a shared session, and Frederick uh, Lecam from ST uh, will join me as a presenter. This session is being recorded, and you all are in mute. So please uh, make use of the question panel and uh, we'll have the team uh, ready to help uh, to clarify all your questions on the fly. Uh, there will be also some extra time uh, at the end uh, for some extra Q&A. So uh, to get started, here comes the agenda uh, for the next 50 minutes. We will start with uh, Frederick Lecam. Uh, exploring and explaining uh, the high performing and security enabled STM 32H7 2X 3X MCUs. Um, I mean, of course, we need to know and learn um, all the capabilities that are available in these new uh, MCUs. And uh, right after, uh, it comes uh, to my part, and I will go over all the available features uh, in the IR Embedded Workbench to help you to track down uh, all uh, kind of uh, bugs and especially the complex uh, bugs. And uh, to finalize it on my side, I will go to a practical demo so you can see um, exactly how uh, to use all these capabilities uh, directly uh, on uh, the devices. Uh, at the end, uh, as mentioned before, we have uh, the summary and uh, some time for uh, the Q&A. And uh, now uh, I will be giving over the presenter here to Frederick Lecam. Thank you. Thank you, Raphael, for the introduction. So my name is uh, Frederick Lecam from ST Microelectronics. I'm uh, located in France and I am in charge of these uh, STM32H7 series uh, from marketing perspective. So I will be uh, spending uh, roughly uh, 10 minutes to show you um, to show you uh, a, a, to show you a brief uh, a brief overview of the STM32 H72X H73X series so that you can really follow up easily on the debug session afterward. So first, I will give you just a few hints about uh, what ST Microelectronics is in the, for the people who don't know us uh, yet. So we are a very uh, large company, uh, semiconductor company, one of the largest in the world with a 2019 revenue of a little bit less than $10 billion. 46,000 people uh, spread over the world, uh, composed of uh, sales organization, uh, manufacturing plant, and um, sales and, ma and marketing uh, uh, at division level where we define the product. We have also our own manufacturing machine and uh, this is uh, noticeable from that from that point of view. So uh, I will now jump on the product presentation itself. So it will not last uh, more than 10 minutes, I guess. It will give you a brief overview of what the, the new series of H7 is. And I have a couple of examples of application that you can retarget really with this uh, series. So the first application is uh, a factory automation product, uh, say you want to make uh, an HMI uh, application that will also perform some control of a process, you will uh, be able to use this kind of device uh, to run your HMI with the large memory that we have embedded on the chip. So that's a device that comes with uh, up to one megabyte of uh, embedded flash and uh, up to 564k byte of RAM but we have also capability to address external memory with the Octal Spy interface. You have a large set of, uh, peripheral, of communication peripheral on board the chip, including the FDCAN, as well as uh, Ethernet, Mac, and USB, and also analog features like uh, fast 16-bit or 12-bit ADC. The other type of application that you can target with this uh, kind of micro is to make a UI, for example. So how you get, we can see on the screen here. So obviously you will take benefit of the high performance of the chip. So the device is able to run up to 550 megahertz uh, from the embedded memory. 
we have the TFT LCD controller on board the chip as well as a graphic acceleration and a multi, multiple high-speed memory interfaces as I mentioned already. Here is also the occasion to, to mention the, uh, the graphic support that comes with uh, on a very small package like a 68-pin QFN package can already drive a display with that, that kind of package and we have also larger pin count up to 176 pin package. We are also uh, proposing a software a library, a graphical library that is named TouchGFX that is now part of the STM32 uh, product offering. The key pillars of this series, so the STM32-872, uh, 3H725, as well as the 730 value line family are the following. So the performance is obviously one of the key pillars. We have uh, 2,768 core mark that is officially posted on the embc.org. We have this uh, architecture on the product that is interconnecting a large number of peripherals that is able to make uh, 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 data uh, exchange between memories or uh, from memories to the external world. We have also advanced security features on this micro that co it comes with uh, crypto hash acceleration. We have also some secure services uh, that are available and obviously uh, the ecosystem is also a big part of the of the selling point of this of this product. So regarding the portfolio, so this STM32H72X 3X family is the one mentioned in the red square that you have on the screen now. So it shows that this product series is now complementing the rest of the portfolio. So it means that, as you know, we have, for example, some dual core lines on this H7 with the 745, 747 series, which is on the top of the on the slide here. And we have also some other variants on the left uh, that are that could be more dedicated for uh, uh, graphic or consumer type of application. So you see that the 72X or 73X family is complementing this portfolio, and as part of it, we are also we keep supporting the extended temperature range up to 125 degrees C uh, uh, as a maximum temperature ambient temperature. If we look at the security features that we have on the product, so we have uh, various uh, uh, various feature embedded on the on, on the micro. We have a crypto hash uh, block hardware block, which is able to run a certain number of uh, protocols like. Uh, uh, algorithm, I would say, so like the AES, triple DES, but also some uh, uh, hashing like the SHA-256. And we also propose a certified uh, crypto library in case uh, you want to run a, a different uh, algorithm. Part of the MCU, you will find a random number generator. We provide also the device with a unique ID and also some key provisioning uh, for, should you want to implement some secure firmware install or secure firmware upgrade on the chip. We have some other features like anti-tamper detection pins, memory protection unit, secure boot is also part of the chip, as well as the protection against uh, reading or writing, uh, and some other features like a secure uh, user area, a PC wrap feature, and also the JTAG fuse capability. Last but not, not least, the Octal Spy interface that we have on the chip, we have two instances, are uh, supporting the on-the-fly decryption from external uh, nor flash memories. So regarding the different lines, so on this table you see the three different lines that we are proposing on the device. I will not go through in details on that. Uh, this visual is available on the presentation anyway and you can access it. Uh, the key important point to remind again is about the performance, the 550 megahertz. Again, I want to insist on the fact that we are proposing up to one megabyte of embedded flash on the chip. Uh, also, we have different variant. You can still procure a device with only 128k byte of flash or 512k byte of flash if you uh, believe that you don't need the one meg. Uh, all the devices comes with a 564k byte of RAM and uh, uh, as I anticipated earlier about the temperature support, uh, we propose uh, uh, support of extended temperature range with the 140 degrees C junction temperature, which does correspond to 125 degrees C ambient. 
This is rendered possible with the, uh, by using the SMPS, which is the switch mode power supply, which is available on chip. If you want more details, obviously, on the features and so on, you can always look at the training material or the, uh, the different videos and the material that we, are, we have posted on the web on this uh, product series. A block diagram here that uh, gives me the opportunity also to highlight uh, the cache that we have on the chip. So we have a 32K byte plus 32K byte of instruction plus data cache on the chip that will allow uh, the use of uh, embedded memories, but also uh, external memories, for example. Um, it comes, uh, it gives the possibility, for example, to connect to the external world by using the Octal Spy. Uh, so you have two instances of this Octal Spy on the chip, which means that you can use one Octal Spy, for example, to connect on an external NOR flash, and uh, but you can also uh, connect to an external uh, 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 Octal RAM, uh, for example. So regarding the portfolio, so um, uh, you see that we are offering this uh, product series in a wide range of uh, package and form factor. So we start with a very small package like a 68-pin 68 QFN package, which is proposed on the 725-735 uh, uh, part number. And we go all the way on the right to the 176 pin package that we offer in two form factors, LQFP package, uh, but also uh, UFBGA uh, package. In between, you have a different variant, so you can always select a device uh, that will correspond to your need in terms of integration, easy to assemble, uh, or testing. Uh, you notice also that we offer 115 pin WLCSP package, which is a very tiny four millimeter by four millimeter uh, package available as well. Here is a use case to show uh, how we do implement, for example, an HMI. I will not go through in details on that. You can look uh, on that afterward if you want, but it's, a, it's really an illustration of how we can connect the device to an external display by the, just using the interfaces and the, uh, um, that we have for the display itself, but also for the external memories. So regarding the ecosystem, so the ecosystem is composed of uh, software tools that we propose that is available from the st.com website. And we have uh, configuration tool, development tools, and so on. Uh, regarding the hardware tools, so we are uh, selling two different types of uh, kits. So we have one Nucleo 144 kit. Uh, which does correspond to the uh, STM32H723. And we have also a discovery kit that you see on the screen, which is also, also hosting a demo, very nice graphic demo. And uh, this, this kit is leaning on the STM32H735 uh, device. We have also a bunch of channels in order to make the technical support uh, with the online support tool, as well as the community is now very large with ST on the STM32, as you probably know. And we have also some uh, MOOC available also for, uh, for free. So regarding the, the back to the development tools, I know that usually it interests quite a lot of people. So we have this discovery kit and this Nucleo board, and it gives this, this, this uh, screen gives you uh, the part number that you can procure from one of our retailers on the market. So it's uh, available in production and available at all the distributors. Uh, the discovery kit is available for $87 uh, resale, while the, the Nucleo, which is a simpler kit, is available for less than $30. So this is basically uh, ending the introduction to the product, and I hand over to, to Raphael now for the technical session. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Frederick. So um, let's uh, go to the second part um, of this uh, webinar. And uh, I have to tell you that um, this part is um, divided in two. So first I will cover some uh, theory part and uh, explain a bit uh, what's um, available on uh, features in the Babbit Workbench uh, to track down uh, the complex bugs. And uh, the second part here will be mainly the practical part uh, where you see 
everything I'm explaining in action, uh, how you can uh, really take advantage of it. So um, it's well known that uh, some organizations or uh, some uh, development groups uh, maybe spend up to 80% of uh, the development time uh, debugging. Of course, uh, this depends a bit on if you are reusing code or uh, the experience, uh, maturity uh, of the group and so on. But then, of course, it's, it's clear that uh, you should have access. As a developer, you deserve to have uh, professional um, debugging uh, tools. And I think the most important, um, as we saw, these um, uh, high performing and security devices uh, in, uh, for example, uh, the H7 uh, 2X or H7 3X uh, running up to 550 megahertz, uh, you should still have all um, capabilities uh, to have full control uh, available. So let's go a bit to the theory and then, as I said, uh, the second part will cover uh, the demo. Um, so um, if I uh, start here, um, the IR embedded workbench uh, might be known for uh, some uh, of you, uh, but as we always say, it's the world's most widely used embedded development tool, and uh, it's more than uh, ordinary toolbox. Uh, there is way more uh, available uh, for you, so it's a professional uh, development uh, tool. So if I start here, uh, we have the debugging and trace probes. So we have uh, the iJet, that's, um, let's say, um, the entry uh, debugging probe. Uh, you can do a lot of, uh, the, take advantage of a lot of the debugging capabilities. Uh, but we also have the iJet trace uh, that goes um, a bit uh, beyond. So mainly uh, from um, getting um, some instantaneous picture to go uh, to the full instructions that are, are being executed. Um, so debugging is very important and that's uh, the main purpose of uh, this session. But I also have to mention a bit about uh, the code quality. Uh, I mean, that's becoming more important more and more important to be aligned with uh, the, the best practices, uh, some coding standards, Miser C, Certi C, um, and, and so on, that's available. And as we all know, most of the bugs, they only pop up during runtime. So doing some runtime analysis, it's uh, also very important. Um, so you can catch uh, these uh, tricky situations, uh, whatever it's of course needed before your product goes through the field. And if you are working uh, with um, safety critical applications, uh, there is also a certified edition um, of, of the tool, uh, especially the, the build tools. I mean, whatever you're using, you're working with industrial, automotive, railway, or uh, medical, uh, we have a certified and frozen uh, version. And uh, more and more, uh, it's also uh, becoming important uh, due to security legislation and uh, I mean you spend a lot of effort uh, in creating uh, or differentiating your product so you definitely want to protect uh, your um, IP and also be sure from uh, the number of units that are being produced so that's also part of uh, the solution. Uh, I have to uh, also mention that uh, this uh, session about um, uh, the tracking down uh, complex works is uh, the first uh, webinar of a uh, series that you have as ambition. And if you stay tuned, there will be uh, other webinars coming covering um, functional safety and uh, also uh, security uh, next. And of course, uh, also very important, I mean, um, the professional tools, uh, of course, can help you. Uh, will help you to differentiate, uh, but for us it's key uh, that you have access uh, to our global technical support team. So whatever you have any issues, um, we will assist you and so you can continue focus on your code. So more than an ordinary toolbox that's available, so that's IR Embedded Workbench. So let's go um, a bit uh, to uh, the uh, debugger part. So, as I said, this is uh, the focus here from um, this uh, part. Uh, I mean, um, as you can see, uh, this 
uh, screen represents pretty well an application where you have full uh, control. Uh, I mean, uh, you have uh, starting by the information having um, the stack usage uh, very detailed. Uh, I mean, uh, you can also uh, have a timeline window uh, where you can uh, have from um, a graphical data log to interrupt log and uh, even uh, some uh, power visualization available uh, for you. And uh, on top, if you are using an Arthos, uh, we have uh, the Arthos Awareness plugin uh, that gives you an insight on what's going on. I mean, the threads, um, what's the current status, uh, stack information, and so on. And uh, when you need some uh, additional information on how your um, application is behaving, I mean, uh, some performance analysis or uh, function profiling, that's of course also available. So that information can be uh, shown to you uh, on top of access to registers. Uh, if you have uh, variables that you want to monitor, not only when you stop the debugger, but uh, also uh, while the application is running. So what I have to say is that um, it's a broad range of uh, debugging probes that are uh, supported. Um, we also uh, support uh, ETM, Embedded Trace uh, Microcell. Uh, I will come back uh, to that uh, part a bit later when I explore a bit more about uh, iJet Trace. And um, you can uh, even use uh, macros uh, to do some uh, testing or, uh, let's say, interact uh, with the device in, in different ways. Uh, and aside of um, a simulator, uh, if you um, don't have access to uh, the hardware, for example, uh, but already want to um, develop a source code, you can do a lot uh, with uh, the simulator already. So if you go a bit in detail here on the timeline, uh, that's uh, a bit better. I mean, uh, you can have a graphical representation um, of uh, variables that you want to monitor, uh, like even uh, print uh, a sin value, uh, for example. Um, but when we talk um, about uh, Cortex-M um, uh, devices, uh, there is core sight uh, for uh, debugging available. So it's really intended for debugging because it's, um, um, let's say, separated from, from the core. And uh, what it will give you, it will give you a lot of uh, additional information while your application is running. And um, what you can also do is use ITM events so you can mainly instrument uh, your code in different ways uh, to uh, print out uh, some information you want to monitor in the timeline uh, without um, affecting uh, the performance. So this is what you can see here on uh, the ITM events and it's straightforward. You mainly make a call to this macro and you can uh, choose some uh, different information even including uh, the program counter information. And uh, finally, um, the power debugging uh, that will mainly, if you supply the uh, power to the target from uh, the debug probe, uh, the, some probes supported like uh, the IR probes, iJet or iJet Race, uh, you will be able to uh, get information on how much power uh, your application is using, um, depending on um, what uh, processing power you need or you can even optimize your application for uh, the power consumption. But I will show that in a practical way uh, during the demo also. Uh, talking a bit about uh, the probe, uh, as I mentioned before, iJet, it's really powerful. I mean, it supports all uh, the STM32 uh, uh, MCUs. Uh, it's, uh, of course, high speed. Uh, as I mentioned, if you want to supply the power from the probe to monitor uh, the power consumption, you can have it up to 400 milliamps. And um, you can have uh, JTAG SWD speeds up to 48 megahertz. Uh, of course, there is no limit on the MCU side. And uh, as I mentioned, on Cortex-M devices, uh, especially we are talking here about uh, Cortex-M7, uh, the STM32H7-2X73X, uh, of course, supports uh, has um, the core side, and a uh, very powerful uh, part of it is the SWO, that's the serial wire output. 
and with iJet uh, you can come up to uh, 96 uh, megahertz and finally uh, breakpoints everybody loves uh, unlimited breakpoints and uh, that's uh, of course also available uh, for most of the targets but um, it's uh, important to have it yes and if you want to go um, a bit uh, beyond then uh, go to the really uh, advanced capabilities i mean uh, we have iJet trace uh, before i explore a bit more about uh, the trace probe uh, it's very important to let you know that uh, in order to use uh, trace the etm uh, trace and by the trace macro cell uh, your device uh, also needs uh, to support it uh, that's uh, exactly the case with uh, the h7 uh, 2x and h7 uh, 3x uh, they um, also support etm and um, here um, you might be wondering uh, if you're running, uh, for example, um, the H735 uh, at 550 uh, megahertz, if you can still use the trace. Yes, uh, of course, uh, because usually what happens is that uh, the trace clock, uh, it's half of uh, the CPU uh, in clock. And um, you can also, of course, uh, do some configuration to bring that uh, a bit down if you need it. And from some tests we did, um, so you might also, of course, be wondering how you connect uh, to the target. There are different ways. Uh, I mean, uh, the physical connection uh, and the tests we did by using the MIPI 20 uh, connector, uh, we managed to get uh, really high, good quality uh, signals uh, by using the MIPI 20. So the device was running at um, uh, 400 megahertz and the trace clock uh, was uh, at 100 megahertz from uh, the, the MIPI 20. If you go a bit beyond, then it might be recommended that you uh, populate um, your board with um, a mixer uh, connector uh, just to be on the safe side and avoid um, any uh, noise, of course, uh, in this um, uh, trace capability pins. Yeah. Good, um, and some additional information. Of course, streaming trace is also available. And uh, finally, uh, the SWO bandwidth and uh, maybe the SWO frequency. Uh, with iJet trace, it's a bit higher, so it can come up to 200 uh, megahertz. And um, trace will collect all the instructions that are being executed um, on, 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 on the MCU. So um, I will talk a bit more about trace and uh, mainly what I want to tell you is that uh, you can uh, get um, also the zero wire output trace, the SWO trace that you can get with uh, iJet and uh, of course if you want to have full trace uh, you should use ETM and um, it's good to make it clear that um, when you talk uh, about trace usually people think or mean ETM and web trace macro cell but there are these two types, uh, the SWO trace, uh, that it's, um, of course, uh, supported um, here on uh, the H7, uh, 2X and 3X. Um, uh, but the main difference is that um, it will uh, be uh, sampled, so you don't get all the instructions, but it will give you a very good um, idea on what's happening. And then, of course, with ETM trace, every instruction that are being is being executed uh, will be recorded and you will get the full information so just that depending on the probe you have uh, you uh, can have uh, more detailed information uh, but SWO trace already brings you a lot of information it will give you a good idea uh, which parts of the application have been used uh, and so on yeah. so some uh, extra information if you do debugging uh, and you don't have access uh, to uh, any kind of uh, trace information. Um, I mean, it mainly will give you, uh, let's say you stop um, your application and uh, by using a uh, standard debug probe or let's say iJet, you'll get that instantaneous picture. And uh, we all know that Usually when some bug happens uh, until you are able to break or you end up in um, uh, uh, some part where you can uh, take control again, uh, it, uh, it takes some time. So iJet will just give you that instantaneous picture, memory, registers, variables. 
um, but if you think about uh, using maybe SWO trace or even uh, ETM trace and Bevel trace macro cell, uh, you will have the possibility to go back in time. So there will be probably a few millions of uh, instructions uh, available and that will give you the capability to actually go back in time and understand exactly what was going on uh, before you ended uh, in that uh, tricky situation. So trace, uh, it's really important uh, to make you more effective um, and uh, to get access to some uh, advanced debugging capabilities. Yeah. Um, so maybe going a bit into more detail here on um, the embedded trace macro cell. Um, as I said before, you'll get all the instructions that are being executed. Uh, you get uh, information about function trace, uh, the very detailed uh, function profile. As I said, it's not sampled, it's 100% of the instructions. If you have streaming trace, uh, it will stay um, and collect as long as you run the application, all the information um, and display it for you. And also, of course, uh, code coverage uh, will be uh, more accurate and uh, more detailed information. So that's uh, what you get on top. But uh, some of these capabilities, of course, you can already get with iJet, but always um, using SWO, and it will be then uh, sampled, as I said. Um, so, um, what can IR Embedded Workbench and iJet Trace uh, or any iJet Probe do for you? Uh, of course, uh, I covered a bit about what capabilities are available, uh, but then the big question that comes is how uh, do you correlate it with uh, the practical use cases and uh, I mean on top on what I just showed um, you also have um, some powerful features available I mean uh, when we come to breakpoints uh, it's not just uh, standard breakpoints are available we have conditional breakpoints um, where you can have uh, some flag or some variable uh, as a condition you can have uh, data breakpoints when, for example, uh, some specific areas, uh, areas or uh, variables are maybe being corrupted, and uh, you want to know when there is a read or write access uh, to that area. So, I mean, when it comes to pointer problems, illegal instructions or data boards, uh, some misaligned writes, uh, code overrides, so maybe some writes to flash uh, or uh, peripheral registers or if the stack is corrupted uh, out of bounds. So by using, of course, uh, these capabilities um, that I just showed in the slides or uh, also mentioned, uh, it will, of course, uh, be way easier uh, to find what you call this uh, million uh, uh, dollar uh, bucks. And uh, what you have to imagine, uh, of course, is that let's say that uh, you have some hard fault uh, if you are using a print uh, F uh, to try to get some information uh, as uh, debugging, it might take a while uh, to get where, where you want. Uh, and by having full control of the application um, with uh, these professional debugging capabilities, uh, of course, it will be way easier. So as uh, I already mentioned, uh, Stack Overflows, uh, if we use a timeline, uh, you can even um, investigate some, uh, for example, some um, timing issues in uh, communication protocols or some general uh, timing problems. And again, um, the, the profile analyzer and code coverage uh, will give you very good insight if your application is behaving, it's not behaving as expected. I mean, uh, it's not that it's directly uh, some uh, buggy source code. It's just that the application uh, maybe needs some different configuration or from um, even priorities in, in, in threads, uh, for example. So the profile analyzer can give you all that insight. So where are you spending your time? Uh, what can you do uh, to improve that? And uh, when you, for example, need to certify your application, uh, it might be also important to know exactly uh, which uh, parts of the source code are being used or uh, are you doing the full code coverage. So that is, of course, very important. So uh, moving on, uh, let's uh, go uh, to um, the practical uh, part. So let me switch here to the Embedded Workbench. 
so you can um, get um, a better idea. Uh, before uh, I start here, I want to mention that uh, I'm using here uh, this uh, uh, discovery uh, uh, kit. So it's the STM32H735G G DK. And um, I'm using this uh, free Arthos uh, thread creation um, example application here uh, that I, of course, added uh, some uh, additional capability uh, on top. Uh, but there are some really interesting projects that you can uh, try out of the box, all compatible with uh, IR. You just generate a project for uh, the embedded workbench for, um, for ARM and uh, you just run it. So this is the kit I'm using here and uh, the example project, uh, I use it here as reference. So uh, switching back here to the IR uh, embedded uh, workbench. So uh, first of all, uh, I want to show you that, um, of course, we uh, support uh, the full line here of um, the H7 uh, III and H7 uh, 2X um, devices here. If I go to the list, uh, you can uh, pretty see here uh, what uh, we have. So the full line is uh, here uh, supported. Of course, there are other um, uh, devices too here from ST, but the focus here is uh, on the H7 2X and H7 uh, 3X. And uh, as you might know, um, and I always tell that to customers um, uh, by just selecting uh, the device, you have 50% of uh, the configuration uh, for your project. Uh, I mean, um, uh, the compiler uh, will of course know what kind of um, instructions can be generated, what capabilities are available. And uh, when we go to debugging, uh, the tool will know what's on the other side, of course, from uh, registers, memory, uh, mapping, and so on. So uh, I will not cover um, other components of uh, the embedded workbench since the focus is uh, debugging. Uh, but of course, uh, the IR compiler, it's uh, well known and um, um, uh, Frederick mentioned uh, the benchmarks and the core mark. And uh, of course, you get uh, one of the highest values uh, here with the IR uh, compiler. So if you go to the debugger, um, and if you look here, uh, of course, uh, we support uh, other debug probes, especially the ST-Link, that it's uh, available in most of uh, the ST uh, boards. So you can use uh, ST-Link for debugging too. Uh, I will focus here on iJet, and mainly because we have some uh, advanced uh, capabilities here, and um, I want to show that. Uh, what you can also see here or what you should um, know about is that uh, you can have some different settings uh, of course we, we start with uh, the driver for uh, the iJet family um, but uh, when you connect to the target uh, we use a flash loader for progr programming uh, the memory and that's uh, straightforward but uh, if you have an application and also a bootloader uh, there might be some really powerful capabilities for you because uh, you could just add the image from uh, the bootloader to your application here. And then you can uh, debug from the startup going over uh, the bootloader, going into the application if that boot sequence is uh, going right. If the bootloader is already there on the target, no problem. You just load the debug information, but you can still uh, go through step by step. So that's, of course, available. You can include some extra images um, you know, if you have uh, your application divided in uh, many, uh, let's say, uh, images. And finally, uh, multi-core. Of course, you have, have a device with multi-core that's also supported here, no problem at all. And uh, we will explore that a bit further since uh, I'm using an application that it's free Arthos based. I selected here the Arthos Awareness plugin and uh, we will make use of it. Uh, good. Uh, to finalize here the settings, I also need to let you know that um, you have the possibility to select different interfaces. I mean, JTAG, SWD uh, for Cortex M. Um, probably you will go for SWD because it requires less pins. But at the same time, uh, JTAG pins and uh, SWD pins are uh, common. So, whatever, if you use one or other and the pins are available, that uh, will of course work for you. 
Uh, but then very important on the configuration side. I mean, as I said uh, during the slides, uh, if you want to use um, uh, the SWO capabilities, uh, like the serial uh, wire output uh, to collect trace information, uh, you need to select that. Uh, if you would have uh, ETM embedded trace macro cell, uh, you could select that. There are some devices that have actually uh, on chip uh, the ATB embedded trace uh, buffer, uh, but I'm not uh, covering that now. But if the device would have that, uh, we could of course use it. And then finally, uh, when it comes to the SWO protocol, um, I'm running this application, of course, on uh, 550 megahertz because I want to show you that um, even if you run these high um, uh, performance devices, you don't have to give up any of the uh, capabilities that are available. So the protocol, you need to decide either you can use uh, the UART mode, but then you need to um, set uh, the CPU clock correctly. Uh, but if you use the Manchester uh, encoding here, uh, the debugger will detect that automatically. So you don't have to worry if you keep changing the clock uh, and so on. So it will detect it. And the auto mode would just make sure that it can detect that um, uh, UART is being used or either Manchester. So uh, that's the simple configuration. So once that is uh, all set, um, of course, uh, I'm able here to connect to the target. And from here, I want to show you uh, the capabilities that you can use. Um, once I uh, connect uh, to the target, uh, we will get access here uh, to the debugging capabilities. And uh, first thing is, uh, of course, uh, if you go uh, under uh, the view menu, you will see what usually most of uh, the tools have available from memory or um, register uh, watch uh, window. Uh, but here on IR, you have, um, of course, also uh, the memory, but not only when you stop the debugger, also during runtime. And uh, if you use printf statements and so on, you can use the terminal I.O. from here. But this is more like the standard uh, capabilities. If you go to the advanced capabilities, um, we can look here on the SWO trace. Uh, we will have the timeline that is already open here, a function profiler. Uh, different breakpoints that are being used. So if I look on this application, as I said, uh, it's based on uh, the simple uh, thread creation. Uh, it has a few uh, threads here and mainly uh, to make it a bit more interesting, what's happening here is that uh, here there is a, a DAC um, um, uh, wave being generated that gets as uh, input uh, to the ADC. So we have um, here another task that will mainly do um, a sampling every five milliseconds to get that information in place. Uh, some thread to just handle um, uh, the buttons uh, here. And finally, uh, the default uh, thread just doing some LED controls. But this is just uh, for uh, information for you. So if I leave this uh, running for a while here, uh, you will see that it becomes a bit more interesting uh, for us. So uh, we can see uh, that um, I'm plotting here um, this uh, trace average um, values here uh, as in a graphical way. So you can monitor uh, in a graphical way uh, what's happening uh, with specific variables, uh, for example. Uh, even uh, scene waves can uh, be uh, used here. Um, of course, it will depend on, on the values. But then we go here to the interrupt log, and here things become really interesting. And if I just work with the zoom, that's always uh, a matter of zooming it correctly. Uh, we have some different interrupts um, happening here. And uh, mainly uh, what happens is that uh, the cystic uh, is, of course, being used for uh, providing uh, the timing for the free archers. Um, the timer two uh, is mainly only used uh, on the beginning before of entering uh, to the Arthos and then it, it stops here. And then um, we have uh, the pen SV uh, for um, some um, to process some actions on 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 on, on, on here on, on the core. Oh, no, sorry, on on the, on the kernel and um, the ADC uh, mainly processes uh, actually. Um, uh, it's triggered uh, once there um, is 
um, some um, ADC uh, interrupt competition, uh, of course. So if I run this uh, a bit further, then I can even show you, uh, let me go back a bit in Zoom here. And if this runs uh, a bit more and I just press the button here, so you can see that now uh, the external interrupt, it's also being triggered. Um, that's all, of course, very straightforward. Uh, but what you can do, uh, if we look here uh, a bit deeper again, uh, the cystic is, of course, uh, generated periodically. You can do some measurement here. And what mainly happens here, if you go from one interrupt to other, uh, you will see that it should be roughly um, one uh, millisecond, if I'm not uh, wrong here. Uh, and it's uh, roughly, um, it, sh it should be 1,000 megahertz. Maybe I, I started um, uh, a bit after the, the line of the interrupt. But you can also see uh, how much time you're spending in time inside the interrupt. So if I just zoom this a bit more, you can see that ADC, it's taking uh, 3.56 microseconds. And uh, the pen SV, it's 1.9 microseconds. And uh, when you're configuring a system and everything, of course, this is very handy uh, when you have uh, different priorities and uh, the interrupts, um, if it's anything affecting your application. Um, and then finally, if I look here uh, on uh, the power debugging, if you want to uh, make sure that the application is uh, using, uh, let's say, not too much power, you can have that information also here. We do sampling uh, of um, uh, that information. Of course, that is uh, all configured here uh, on the settings. And uh, mainly, as you can see, since this application is running at uh, 550 megahertz, uh, we are doing uh, roughly 5,594 uh, samples per second. Uh, we could, of course, change that or make it even higher uh, if you want. Uh, it will depend a bit on the bandwidth that you have available. Of course, if you enable all the capabilities, you might come to a limit or might lose some packages. So that's um, yeah, the way uh, it works here. And then finally, uh, as I mentioned, you can do some instrumentation in your application. And uh, what I have here, uh, it's uh, the ITM, and mainly what you need to do, uh, if I just go to part of uh, application here, we have this capability to add some macros here, ITM event. Uh, this is, uh, of course, part of um, the core site, and if I go here to the definition, you can have it with uh, different um, uh, sizes here, 8, 16, 32 bit, or um, even including uh, the program counter and so on. So that's a very straightforward way to keep printing out uh, some information that you want to uh, monitor. Uh, in this case, uh, we are using it uh, to show um, the, the the switch of um, uh, the tasks uh, of con the switch of context uh, here. So that's uh, the way we are uh, making uh, use of uh, the ITM. But you can use it anywhere, and this is like a macro. If you go for your release build. Uh, that will not uh, be used. It's only for uh, the debugging uh, mode. And uh, of course, um, there is way more uh, available here. Uh, I mean, as I mentioned, um, we have the capability uh, to do some function profiling. Uh, we also have the option to do some code coverage. So if I just uh, enable the capability here, and I maybe can just rerun this application, maybe we should just clear everything so it starts from uh, scratch here. And once I run the application, you will see that on the code coverage, I will just run it for a while here. I press the button a few times and we will be able to see what's going on. Uh, I mean, um, of course, uh, since it's uh, sampled and I'm using uh, here um, the iJet uh, capabilities, uh, you have to run it for a long time until you get samples from all the routines, but it already gives you some good idea. If we look here on the function profiler for the uh, performance analysis here, we can see that we spent most of the time here in this uh, scale underscore wave. So if we have some routines that we want to optimize for speed, maybe that's where we should get started, uh, of course. So it gives you uh, a good insight on what's going on. Uh, but when uh, it comes to uh, some other features that you should be aware, uh, we have the SWO trace. And uh, I need to bring this window back here because I 
maybe it's not the best spot to put this window, sorry. Um, it got to a different uh, error here. Maybe we should just get rid here. But mainly what happens if I, for example, just start uh, this application again uh, and leave it running for a few seconds, uh, I have here uh, the sampled uh, trace uh, coming out. And if I just uh, go over here, the application, uh, we will see that uh, I can um, just put it here, actually. So I can just go back in, in time here, and uh, you will see that. Yeah, so now I'm back here and fully. Uh, that's why uh, developers always need two, two monitors to get uh, everything um, under control here. But as you can see, you can just uh, keep following here uh, the SWO trace, and uh, you can see what's exactly uh, going on here. Um, finally, uh, what I also want to show you, when you want to monitor uh, variables on the fly, or maybe even uh, memory, I mean, if I just leave this application running for a while here, uh, we will see actually that it's updating uh, the value here on the fly. So you can see that all the information is being displayed uh, and the values are being updated here uh, on the fly. So you don't need to stop the debugger to get that information. And uh, the same um, is of course valid here when you use uh, the memory window. So I'm going here to open uh, the memory window and maybe I should just uh, let it go here, it should already be available here. So it's running here. Uh, sorry, I think I enabled the live update. Now it's a, a, a enabled here. So as you can see, even uh, the in updates in memory are being displayed here in red. So we can have that information on the fly. Um, definitely uh, with this full control uh, on what's happening in our application, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, 80% of time being spent on uh, doing debugging, uh, you deserve uh, access uh, to um, uh, the professional tools uh, to be more effective. So uh, this is uh, what uh, I tried uh, to show on the capabilities. Uh, I could uh, spend, of course, way more time uh, showing you everything we have from um, the conditional breakpoints to the data log uh, breakpoints or uh, the data breakpoints when there is access uh, to a specific uh, variable. I can maybe just find and show this one. Uh, if you look here on this code, uh, there was access to uh, this variable and then uh, the application, of course, stopped. So um, this is uh, the practical part um, I wanted to explore and uh, show uh, you. Um, as a summary, uh, if I go back here uh, to my slides, of course, again, uh, working with high uh, performance devices, uh, STM32, H723, and um, sorry, H72X and uh, 73X uh, are very powerful, uh, running at 550 megahertz. You shouldn't lose any capabilities, and that's definitely the case. By using SWO, ETM trace, profiling, you can identify hotspots, uh, streaming trace if you have the pins available you will definitely find the million dollar bucks uh, by using uh, the right uh, debugging uh, tools. Uh, good, um, now it's time uh, that uh, we switch uh, to uh, the Q&A. Uh, we still have a few minutes left here, and I can see that uh, we got uh, some um, good questions, and uh, our team has uh, been uh, busy. Uh, that's, of course, uh, very good. Um, we have um, some uh, questions, uh, if I start here, if uh, this also applies to STM32H4 and 5X. Um, so mainly what I can say and how it was answered, um, it of course apply for uh, the full STM32 line. Uh, the main focus was here to show that even this high performing device that's still all uh, available uh, in, in the capabilities yeah so if i continue here on uh, the questions i will scroll down to see if we have some open uh, questions so i'm going over here what we have please uh, feel free to still send in uh, questions um, if there's anything that pops up uh, now for you 
So we had some questions on how uh, the IR embedded workbench uh, compares to the STM32 ID. Uh, I mean, uh, I try to uh, best uh, show um, the capabilities here, but of course, um, the compiler for a faster and uh, more compact code is also uh, a big differentiator uh, from core marks. Um, that's, um, of course, how we differentiate here on the ID. Um, we had a question about uh, the, the touch uh, GFX, if it's recommended for graphics UI development. And um, yes, uh, we had an answer about that then. Um, it, it's, uh, of course, um, part of the examples uh, available for um, especially this uh, board that I used here. Uh, but there are, of course, other uh, capabilities or other uh, stacks also available. Uh, and uh, ST, uh, of course, uh, offers um, some free of charge. Okay, then we had also a good question about uh, if there are any voice recognition libraries available. And um, the answer is yes. So it's um, uh, available and ported over the whole range of high performance STM32 devices. Of course, um, there are some questions about how iJet uh, compares with um, J-Link uh, from Sega, for example. And um, the main, uh, what I, aside of what was already answered is, of course, it's fully integrated with the ID. We have, um, uh, we make sure that uh, we can take um, the best uh, out of uh, the integration. Um, so, as mentioned, um, if you have further questions on that or uh, need more information or some comparison uh, on performance and so on, we can, of course, provide it uh, to you. Just please reach out to fae.usir.com so we can provide you more information on that, yeah. And then we have a very good question. Um, so, how much of uh, the capabilities that were explored uh, apply to the Nucleo Eval board? And, um, this all is definitely doable on, on, on the nuclear board. I mean, uh, you have uh, the SWD, SWO pins um, available. So as uh, soon uh, as long as you connect uh, the pins to the debug rope, all that is uh, definitely available, yeah. Um, and a very good question. Um, if the IR and Babbage workbench provide um, the code coverage and um, I see some comments, um, uh, what, what's available, and that's a good point. Uh, the call graph, um, it's a very powerful uh, capability. Uh, in this demo, uh, I was not uh, able to show that uh, because um, the discovery kit for the 735 uh, doesn't have the uh, ETM uh, traces pins available. It has ETM uh, in build, but the pins are not um, available. Um, uh, so. I couldn't use it on, on this pro, but definitely, uh, if you have your own um, uh, prototype, you will be able to use that fully. And you get this in a graphical way. I mean, the, on top of the code coverage, seeing exactly which functions are being called and what's happening in the application. Yeah. Um, very good question. Uh, so uh, yes, um, so the question is if the demo was performed only using a single uh, SWO pin, uh, yes, that is correct, uh, only SWO pin, and uh, SWO was running at 100 megahertz here, actually, so that's what I have. Uh, and then we have a final question here about um, how to set up uh, trace uh, triggers. Um, we have different opportunities, uh, of, of course, to uh, work with trace, with having a start and stop um, uh, conditions or breakpoints. Uh, we can do uh, many uh, settings around it, starting from um, by using the ETM uh, from the device that can be used from one uh, to four pins. So you don't need to use the four. Uh, you can maybe just uh, use one and then uh, it's compressed, maybe a bit lower, lower speed, I mean. Uh, but that um, that's uh, definitely available. So we can uh, catch up uh, offline uh, with uh, some uh, more information about it. And uh, I'm afraid we are running out of time here, uh, but thank you so much for uh, your time and uh, for all uh, the very good questions. And uh, if ha you have any additional questions, please make sure to reach out uh, to us. Um, we are happy uh, to help you uh, further. Yeah.